So how robust, how reliable are the T procedures? Well, it works great when it's exactly normally distributed. However, most data is not perfectly normal. Well, how robust are the T procedures when they're not normal? Well, you need to make sure you have a simple random sample. And you know that uh, outliers and skewness affect your data. But how much is acceptable? If you have a small sample, less than 15, your data may, needs to be really pretty close to normal with no outliers. If it's larger than 40, then your T is acceptable, even if you have strong skewedness. Now, if it's between 15 and 40, it can be normal or have a little bit of skewedness, but no outliers, and you can still use it. So it all depends upon your sample size. So to review what normal looks like, we would say this first graph, it's single peaked, it's reasonably normal. This one over here, where we would say, has some skewness to it. So whether you can use the T or not on this one would depend upon your sample size. This one here, we have a definite outlier, so we would not be able to use it unless we had a very large sample size. Here we have a binomial, or not binomial, bimodal distribution, meaning two peaks, so it's not normal, and we could not use our T. So let's consider these situations. Could we use our T here or not in this first one when we're dealing with the percent of states with Hispanic population? Well, we would say no for this one because it's not a simple random sample. We also have a strong skewedness, but our sample size is 50 since we have 50 states, but we would still not be able to use it. Could we use it here? Well, we have 20 pieces of data. We're going to say no, you cannot, because with 20 pieces of data with strong skewedness, it is not acceptable, according to the robustness that we talked about a little bit ago. So how about this one here? Would we be able to use our T procedures in this one? And here we would say yes. Yeah, we have some skewedness here, but it's within reason, and our sample size is larger than 40. Up here, I did not give you that, so you didn't know that ahead of time, but if it's a large sample, you can use it, even if you're dealing with skewness. Now here, we would say yes, assuming we had a simple random sample. It is normal looking, so we could use our T procedures. So if we replace sigma with S, we end up then using our T distribution. For our T distribution, we're trying to make conclusions about mu when we don't know mu or our sigma. So which one of these is not true about our standard error? Well, we use it to uh, estimate this. However, your answer is B because we have to use this when we don't know sigma and this estimates the standard deviation of our x bar. So which one of these is not an acceptable answer? Well, B is your D, B, T distribution. And we had said your T distribution in the center is always shorter than your normal distribution. Well, here we have our C being shorter yet. So we know that our C could not be our normal. Our normal has to be taller than our T in the middle. So therefore, our answer is B, which is line or curve C. Here we have a sample size of eight. We're looking for a 95% confidence interval. What would be our T asterisk for this particular problem? Well, for this problem here, you would want to go ahead and go across on, since we're dealing with a sample size of eight, you'd want to crawl, crawl across on degrees of freedom of seven, because it's always one smaller than your sample size. So we know our T is what we have here in the second column. Here we have our tires, 14 tires, a test statistic of a negative 3.006, 
And remember when you're dealing with your T and using your chart, it doesn't make a difference if your T is positive or negative. So we need to go to, since we have 14 tires, we need to go to our 13th row. And we need to go across till we get to 3.006 or what it's in between. It's in between these two here. We would then conclude 